Hello everyone, my name is Axel and I like to build stuff. Chances are if you clicked on this video, you have probably seen one of Tom Stanton's videos on his compressed air engines. However, I am not here to design and clone one of his designs and showcase it to you guys. Instead, I am here to go through my entire process of designing and printing my own air engine. First off, my engine only needs five screws, one for the piston and four for the head. On top of that, mine doesn't need brass bushings for the conrod because I use liquid lubricant on my pistons. And third, I don't use any push rods. And to explain why that's important, I need to head onto the floor. This is my 1997 Honda XR250R. This uses push rods. Now, for the time it was built and for its application, push rods are very optimal. They're lightweight, they provide more low end torque, and when combined with air cooling, they're actually more fuel efficient. But the problem is, is that this is a four stroke desert racer. And this was built to go a thousand miles in the desert. But my engine is a two stroke engine that is made completely out of plastic. And with these push rods, I'm a little concerned that it might actually snap the cranks. Because I'm not using metal, I'm instead going to use a different valve system. So instead, I'll be using something that both Tom Stanton and 3D Printed Life used in their novelty engines, an airlock valve. This airlock valve works by basically having a reservoir that is then filled with high pressure air. And then, as the piston travels down, it opens up the reservoir and allows air to flow into the cylinder. And with that very quick explanation, here's a build montage. But before I show you all that, please consider subscribing, as only 1.7% of you guys are actually subscribed. And on top of that, while you're down there, make sure to leave a like as it helps me throughout the YouTube algorithm with my less frequent uploads. Anyway, to the engine. Right, so I do apologize for the background noise, but I have the engine right here, fully assembled. I haven't glued on this head because it's like a fail safe. If too much pressure, instead of blowing up the bottle or blowing up my top, it'll just blow the top off. So. Uh, yeah, it's fully assembled. It runs pretty smooth. I have some silicon uh, bike lubricant, uh, bike chain lubricant, right there. And uh, yeah, so this stuff is silicon based, so it should not destroy my engine. Since I don't have a bike pump, I'm gonna be using a compressor end uh, with a small adapter to go from Schrader to Presta. And besides that, yeah, let's give this thing a test. Ah, I lost pressure too quickly. Pro tip, if you're gonna build this engine, use a five millimeter ceramic ball bearing. This BB is not sealing. I just lost a bunch of pressure because of that, so. There we go. Ah, uh, it ran out. But it did, it did run. You heard that, right? It did run. So now, lubricant time. No, wait, that, that sounded wrong, sorry. There you go, it's, hear that? It's flowing better. There you go. Because this is not a two liter bottle and because it's not airtight, it won't run for very long. But yeah, uh... There you go! Uh, it's not running for very long. So I assume that's because the flywheel is either heavy or because that would explain the low idle speed or it's a matter of it's just this bottle is too small or I'm only getting it up to like 20 PSI. I can safely hold it when I'm putting it at this pressure. And when this thing is going up and down, I think it's reading like 25 PSI is the highest I've done. There you go. It, because this is a 4cc engine, yeah, it's about the same size as the last nitro engine I used. Uh, link will be up there. But yeah, we are two screws down. As you can see, we only have four screws on the flywheel. 
And so this time, I'm hoping it'll rev a little higher, but also last a little longer, because then it's not turning all of its energy into uh, inertia. Okay, so it's definitely harder to start. Quick intermission. Uh, yeah, so I did a little air test. Yeah, it runs off of my own breath. So it ran pretty well, but I think I can make a few improvements. Namely, a slightly smaller stroke, but a larger bore to give it a higher revving range, but also more torque. On top of this, I think I could use a precision ball bearing instead of a BB I found about four years ago, because this will eliminate those leaks and also it will seriously help me with my engine's performance time. If you guys have any video suggestions for any videos ideas, make sure to leave them in the comments of this video. People have been asking me for a 3D printed trebuchet and I plan on doing that after the version two video, so make sure to stick out for that. I'm also planning on making a straight four engine which will be very interesting. <laughs> also, during the summer, I'll try to put out two videos per month instead of the normal one, but if that can't happen, make sure to count on those one month videos. Also, I would like to thank all of you guys so much for watching. It has been a very fun project for me, and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.